Hello everyone. After having a look at how to get into the exports, we need to go a little further into the essentials of exports. During this session, we will have a look at further issues wherein we need to understand whenever we are entering into the market, what are the things where we can really get a little more advantage. We also need to understand what is the difference between the international marketing, domestic marketing. When we go into the international market, we also have to take into consideration some other aspects like the product specification, the standards, etc. We will also have to understand different institutions which are involved into the exports and different setups like quality control etc. What would be the essential part you must understand. At the same time you must know that DGFT is an important organization so and it is the one which announces the foreign trade policy. So I will give you a little idea about the foreign trade policy 2000. 15, 20 and last but not the least we must understand the WTO related issues as those agreements are going to impact your business a lot. Thank you very much. Hello friends. I am sure my first lecture has inculcated a lot of interest in your minds and you are now eagerly looking forward for knowing some more details about the basic steps involved into this important exercise, export business. As I have told you, you have to have that particular zest for knowing some things and you also have to have the readiness for undertaking the risk. When you are taking the calculated risk, one more thing I would like to add on is the precautions you need to take in which some important points need to be noted. What are those points? Number one, you need to remember certain points and you need to find out the items for your own business. Number three is you need to know what exactly is the HS code. Number four, you have to find the item type, whether it is free, reserved, etc. There is one more thing which is required which is find out the export and import data for which you will have to have knowledge and understanding about the databases. Very important thing is step number six, you need to find the buyer. Okay, how do you do all these things? What are the points to remember? Number one, Export and import is totally free with very limited restrictions, meaning thereby 96% of the items which are into the product profile and the export basket of India, 96% of those items are free. Now, you need to find the buyer you need to find the product, you need to find the market. So that is your own responsibility, that has to be your own initiative. Right? Then, what exactly should be the product and what is the price you are going to charge for that? That is also going to be your own decision. You need to know what exactly are the issues involved into that. And... Also remember one thing that you need to be very, very competitive, which means that you need to export the product. You are not supposed to export whatever are the taxes being imposed on that. 
Second stage is to find out the item for export. Third is find out the HS code. What is HS code? Find out the product. Yes, we are going to give you the idea about this, how to find the product, how to identify your product. We are going to give you the details of it. To give you an idea about HS code, yes, this is the harmonized system of nomenclature wherein the items are classified into different categories and these categories are first classified into two-digit classification. What does it mean? This means that products are put into different broad categories. For example, rice, wheat, electronic equipments. There are two-digit level codes. When you go further into the quality related aspects and further classification. For example, rice is something which is husked rice, parboiled rice, basmati rice, non-basmati rice. So, all these categories you will see four digit, six digit level classification. Understood? So, after knowing about your the classy HS code of your own product, you have to analyze the export import data. I gave you the idea about the major product categories which are into the exports, which are into the imports. I have also given you an idea about the top export destinations and top 10 import sources. But within those markets. Do you really want to go into those markets or do you want to go to some markets where you feel that there is a lot of scope for your product? How are you going to decide? You need to have an understanding about the export-import data and we will give you the clue as to how to move forward. After having looked into all these aspects, the sixth number step involves find the buyer. I think that is very, very important because you want to export, you want to sell the product, you want to send it outside into the country, but there has to be a buyer who is ready to buy that. There has to be a buyer who wants that. So, how do you make sure that the product you are exporting is of interest to the country and to the profile of the customers? Number one, you have to depend upon your own intuition or the scientific knowledge, whatever you gather before you get into the export. You can, of course, find out from your friend who has an experience about this activity. You can visit the export promotion websites. You can also get in touch with the distributors, the dealers, the commission agents, etc. You can also decide on the product selection with the help of references. For example, somebody your cousin knows who is already doing a business. You try and find out. That is what happens. One of our participants, IFT has been conducting the programs, Niryat Bandhu at your desktop. There we have a slightly different. This is MOOC session where it, has, it is the recorded session. There it is the live interaction. And it is the live interaction with the participants who are coming to us. The classes are at the moment we have Niryat Bandhu 2.0 version which is the new version in which we have given 25 sessions. This particular program is 20 sessions. There we have done two changes. Number of sessions we have added and the dimensions which are more of the practical insights have also been added there. Every day it is two hour session. I'll give you a very interesting story. Many of my participants who have been the participants of these programs have found out their the potential markets and the buyers with references. 
some of the participants who have been established exporters have also participated in our program. So these participants help the new ones to really go into the new market. I have one lady who attended this program who is a real entrepreneur who wants to carry forward her business. She is in touch with me, who is just with references, whatever. I recently visited Russia where I got to know many who are interested in buying some of these items. So just out of the references, now the scientific knowledge, the agencies which will help, how, what are the investment opportunities, which are the organizations which are helping in Russia, all those things they are trying to get. They, I'm giving you the example. I My visit is in, insignificant. Like this, through the references, participants get a lot, get to know a lot and they enter into those markets. Visits, exhibitions, event participation, advertisement, marketing and surfing through the net. These are many of the points which will help you a lot in finding the buyer. After you get into it, what are the preliminaries? You need to take the order. You need to find, because initially you may require the help of customs house agent. You need to identify and decide the mode of transportation, of export, sea, air, etc., you need to find the carrier. You have to file the shipping bill. You have also to sort out the issues related with payments. There has to be a request for bank realization certificate. And there are different schemes, export schemes. You have to register for export scheme. After having done all this, you must note that export-import is totally free and export selling can be direct selling. It can be through the intermediary also. It can be through the export house. It can be through the export consortia. When it is indirect selling, you can really operate through one or many different types of the intermediaries who are operating in different firms. There is a category of merchant exporters. There are several merchandising houses as distinct from registered export houses who are specializing in the exports and who are operating in metropolitan cities concentrating on select markets. As I told you in my first session, there are different marketing related issues also. Many of you have the knowledge and understanding of the four P's of marketing. Product, price, place and promotion. Well, you are selling into the domestic market. You have the knowledge and understanding about all these things. That's fine. When you have to go into the international market, you cannot forget three aspects. What are those important issues? Cross-cultural knowledge is required. Country, regional knowledge is also required. And cross-border transaction knowledge also required. What does it mean? There can be cultural differences. Whatever is acceptable in India may not be acceptable in Saudi Arabia or some other country like Pakistan. Whatever is the advantage in going to nearby countries may not be the advantage in going to out to very distant countries. 
and you have to have an understanding about which particular currencies are the local currencies into those markets you have to know whatever are the exchange rate fluctuations related issues you also need to understand where when you are going to the export market you have to pick up a market so whatever is nearby start with very very small thing start with one or two markets start with something which is very easy for you to go and what is the easy part of it south asia yes southeast asia to a certain extent yes distant country like russia yes if that is on priority list of a country where the country is trying to help the exporters by way of putting some of the schemes by way of giving some of the concessions etc so also one more thing which is important is the non availability of export assistance some of the countries the export assistance is not available ecgc doesn't cover give the cover don't go to such markets there are certain special requirements of the market for example if you visit russia your charger is not going to help you they have a different set of pin so you have to have that knowledge you go to usa you go to some uh, countries you will see that your 220 voltage is not really working product specifications will have to be taken into consideration distant location because then the freight and the logistics related issues might create a problem for you the accessibility of the market restrictions on remittances etc all of these things will have to be taken into consideration when you are going you can prefer a market which is giving a preferential rate of duty some of the countries with which india has entered into an fta you can really see which are those ftas which are the products where there is a preferential tariff are you comfortable in that you need not be a manufacturer initially no one can unless and until there is an established business you are just taking over from your father it's easy otherwise if you are no wise otherwise if you are a new person then you will have to establish yourself so for the time being you can concentrate on the market which is offering the preferential treatment where you have a better profile available due to the cost related aspect somewhere the business community which is more of india all over world there are indians so you will get the ethnic population wherever you go mauritius singapore i visited many countries and i have seen that there is always a big chunk of population which is belonging to indian community so even the products like mathe pe lagane wali bindi and chudiyan and sarees are also not an exception you get everything there so however whenever you wherever you are going you decide you have to prepare to manage the finance payment and risk if you don't have the understanding of that that will create a problem right you have to choose your distribution shipping and delivery methods you have to have an understanding of the marketing information sources export promotion councils commodity boards fio fikki asocham ministry of commerce data dgcis data india trade promotion organization is one which is also helping you in organizing the exhibitions etc you can be a part you need to have an understanding about the mai and mda scheme of dgft which is which is which is assisting the exporters to participate in these exhibitions you there are indian embassies there are high commissions abroad who are helping a lot in all my foreign visits i have noticed one thing that there is a commercial counselor and his focus is on 
improving the trade between India and that particular country. He helps you a lot. You have to have the correct knowledge and understanding and his contact. You have to know about different business promotion websites. There are international yellow pages also. There are popular websites from where you can do the surfing. You need to understand that there has to be a relation management. There are employees, there are agents, there is a CA, there is advocate, there is a customs house agent, there is a something which you have to do with the logistics. There, there can be different consultants who can help you. But remember one thing, this particular course will give you the idea about some of these important things which can definitely help you in having the correct understanding so that you don't get cheated. I have been told by many of my participants that, ma'am, because we did not have the understanding about these FTAs, about the preferential rate of duty, etc. We have lost a lot because why will the, any agent worry about your own well-being? You are interested in maximization of a profit, which is a definitely something which is a very, very normal thing for you. And that can happen only if you are able to reduce your cost, cost of production. You are able to get the maximum profits by way of managing everything properly. So, government schemes is one thing which you must know about. We will give you an idea about that. DGFT is operating through the foreign trade policy and this particular foreign trade policy has been constantly working on different aspects. So, Ministry of MSME, state governments, DGFT, all these institutions will help you a lot. You have to decide what is the mode of operation. You have to decide what is the name of your organization you are going to think about. Then you have to arrange startup documents, PAN, bank account, IC, RCMC, etc., I told you, you have to already selected a product. Then you have selected the market. You know what are the prospective buyers. You have decided your pricing, costing. You will also have to know that there are certain schemes which are helping you in sampling. You need to negotiate with the prospective buyer. And always remember one thing that negotiating with buyer is very, very important. You need to convert the no into the yes and that you can do with successful negotiation right there is a manufacturing cost there is a cost of packaging there is a transportation cost warehouse charges cost of inspection expenses in customs central excise loading charges free and insurance charges so when you are deciding on the pricing the cost it's a, you have to recover all your costs. You also need to incur the cost for money, I mean the expenditure for after sale service. You need to get into the product differentiation because you may have to do the vari variation. You may have to do some modification. You have a product. The other market doesn't want that. You have standard 3 by 3 bed sheet. The other market which you, where you are going the products, the bed specification is slightly different. Okay, so you do the variation in that. Then you also see what exactly is the frequency of the purchases. Some products which are consumer goods, frequency might be more. Some of the products are not very frequently purchased. So understand what is the pre frequency. And when you are negotiating, I told you that you have to convert the no into the yes. So, avoid three C's. Conflict, controversy, criticism. Know the buyer's real interest in the product. Sometimes you lose on because of your lack of experience in successful negotiations. 
एंड देन यू फील अरे भैया थोड़ा ज़्यादा पैसा ले लेता मैं तो ज़्यादा पैसा चार्ज भी कर लेता तो मिल जाता सो दैट सो रिपेंटिंग सो एवॉइड दैट सिचुएशन यू हाव एवर डिफाइन एवरीथिंग द डिलीवरी शेड्यूल द पोर्ट ऑफ शिपमेंट डॉक्यूमेंटेशन मोड ऑफ पेमेंट स्पेशल पैकेजिंग प्रोक्योरमेंट ऑफ गुड्स how you are taking it what is locating that pricing that ordering that receiving that distribution quality control also is something which is very very important you have to have labeling packaging and marketing also you will have to look into that i told you in earlier class also risk management is something very important there is a credit risk there is a currency risk there is carriage risk also and there is a country risk also so understand all those things very well times have been changing there is a lot of improvement and digitization has become the part of the life so you have you have heard about ease of doing business report india's ranking has improved a lot in ease of doing business we have jumped 30 ranks and we have reached 100 rank and dgft has been facilitating export and import so ease of doing business for there are essential documents now which has been turned down to just three for exports and for imports the information is given here into the slide as i told you foreign trade policy the ambitious target has been to take india's exports to the new heights and now the last segment you must know that wto world trade organization is an important organization there are different agreements and agreements which impact the business are for example agreement on agriculture sps which is sanitary and phytosanitary technical barriers to trade and anti dumping subsidies countervailing measures services related issues are also being covered under the services agreement so you must have the proper understanding of that many of the wto related issues are going to be covered in the session trips is something trade related intellectual property rights that is also very important copyright you must have heard about copyright design trademark patents un, uh, undisclosed information etc so wherever these things are going to be referred to information on all these issues is available on website there is a www.wto.org website which gives a lot of information about the wto related agreements implications for the information the research papers they are all available ift has a wto center and wto center website you come to ift website within that you go to visit wto website center's website and you will get many important documents there also so with these two sessions of the preliminaries and the basic knowledge and understanding which is required for getting into the successful export business i am sure you will benefit a lot my dear participants this particular session has also been equally interesting in the sense that you have got to know a lot about different aspects including what exactly are the points to remember because 
unless and until you keep in your mind that these are the things which are essentials, you will not be able to move forward successfully. You have already understood what exactly is the difference between the marketing, international marketing and the domestic marketing. Because ultimately you have also grasped, taken into consideration what are the different products, whichever are the markets which you, you can prefer, preferential rate etc are the issues have also been covered. We also saw what exactly are the different finance related aspects which are the different institutions which need to be looked into which need, where you will require the assistance. So the names also you need to understand and that institutional setup has also been explained to you. As the schemes are giving you the benefit in terms of the duty etc. You have to understand the schemes. I have given you the idea which are the different schemes through the FTP which is the Foreign Trade Policy 2015-20 launched by DGFT. I have also given you a brief about WTO related aspects because some of the articles, some of the agreements are going to impact you a lot. So, I am sure this has added a lot of value into your stock of knowledge. Thank you.